You are so pretty for like a dark skin person. <laughs> eh, kid, you're not gonna get the ani. Tapi kulitnya, eh, itam sila kulit mo lai. Dulu putih lawa. Cuba kau pakai ni, putih ni kulit mo. Kalau cari laki, cari laki yang putih. Macam hitam, jom masih ha. Eh, adik beradik mu, kenapa semua kulit putih? Tapi kau, nak kau cuci muka mu bisa ya kalau macam hitam masih ha. Biar anak mu pi kulit nanti putih. Ha? Reses, anti bukan reses, bukan pasal anti ucap, anti tagur kulit mo, pasal anti mo kau lawa. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we'll get more into that later on in the video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make commentary videos and occasionally comedy skits and lifestyle videos. If you're new to my channel and you enjoy my content, don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on the notification button so you don't miss any of my videos. If you haven't watched my two previous commentary videos about beauty standards, I do briefly talk about this issue, but for today's video, I do want to elaborate more and further about colorism, prejudice or discrimination against individuals with a dark skin tone, typically among people of the same ethnic or racial group. But simply put, because I want to make sure that everyone understands, especially my younger audience out there, colorism is basically discrimination based on skin color. The reality is that the lighter your skin tone is, the more privilege you will have. Colorism can happen anywhere in the world, in any country or any community. It is so embedded and deep-rooted in our society that some of us generally aren't aware that it exists or that it is an issue. Colonization aside, there has been a history of classism and hierarchy linked with colorism. There were factors like religion and the caste system. Being darker skinned generally meant you worked outdoors in the fields and you weren't so well off. Whereas being lighter skinned showed wealth as it meant you could afford to stay indoors or have a job inside. Meanwhile, for the Europeans, it's quite the opposite because being tan shows that you have money as you had the time and money to go travel and be outdoors, especially during a time like winter. But it's definitely safe to say that the European colonization definitely played a big role. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the European colonization. To briefly explain, the European colonization is basically when the Europeans colonized lands. The Europeans took away their cultures and started exporting ideas of Western white ideals, including Eurocentric beauty standards. The colonization has also perpetuated stereotypes and connotations regarding colorism. White supremacist stereotypes that framed light-skinned people as the good blacks and darker-skinned people as lazy, unintelligent, unattractive, undesirable, criminal, aggressive, and just all around bad. And it's unfortunate because not every Everyone is aware why we think this way. The colonial mentality is the internalized attitude of ethnic or cultural inferiority felt by the people as a result of colonization. A perfect example of this is a preference for all things foreign over our own. But of course, one of the biggest impacts out there is the media representation or lack thereof. Globalization has helped to spread this colorist ideal of Eurocentric features that reinforces and perpetuates the issue of colorism. Whether it's Bollywood or Hollywood, the casting will always have a preference for lighter skinned people. And it's very common for light skinned people to be portrayed in a positive light. They are often seen as heroes, likable and desirable. But on the other hand, dark skinned people who are rarely casted as the lead roles are generally seen in a negative light as the villain or the bad guy. Or even worse, quite often they are seen as the side funny character. The media is clearly favoring light skinned people, especially for lead roles. And so when you lack that representation of these darker and tanner skin tone people that do exist, Exist. And because you're constantly bombarded with the glorification of light-skinned people, those who are darker skin toned will start to feel inferior. Protecting your skin from sun damage and harmful rays is not an issue. However, shaming people for not having lighter skin tone or for being dark skin toned is an issue. And that is basically how the skin whitening and bleaching industry thrives. The skin whitening and bleaching industry straight up profits off colorism. For decades, these products have been glorified and advertise everywhere with big celebrity endorsements. They sell you this false reality that you will feel happier and more confident with yourself once you achieve this lighter skin tone. When I came to Australia and summer came along, I got really tan. Instinctively, I wanted to lighten my skin because that's all I knew growing up in Southeast Asia. And when I went to the stores, I could not find a single skin whitening product and I was genuinely shocked. In Southeast Asia, you could get skin whitening products anywhere. You 
would have a wide variety of options. And what I find out why countries like Australia make it hard to buy these skin whitening products is because it's literally banned. Poisonous chemicals, hydroquinone and mercury, which can cause organ failure and even cancer. This young man's mother is laying in a hospital in a comatose state suffering from mercury poisoning after using a Pond's labeled skin cream. But one of the cheapest and deadliest is mercury, a heavy metal that can be toxic for humans, even in tiny doses. Repeated exposure, like smearing it on your face every day, can lead to tremors, kidney failure, and even birth defects. Dua produk ku putih, bahan berbahaya, mengandungi mercury. <laughs> but not everyone is fully educated about this issue and even if they are some people still willingly choose to lighten their skin and when you're constantly bombarded with this ideal of white beauty or you're constantly hearing comments about being dark skin is wrong and flawed you will eventually do whatever it takes regardless of the cost or if it is literally deadly or even applying cleaning bleach to their face and body what really saddens me is seeing people, especially the lower class, spend their hard-earned money on a product all because of this perpetuated colorist ideology. Make us sell! Whoa, 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 whoa. There are people who are willing to do whatever it takes to be white and avoid getting dark. There are cultures where it's completely normal to obsess over whitening babies from the moment they are born. I'm guilty of it, but I have made so many jokes about dark skinned people growing up because my cousins, uncles and aunties, everyone made comments about people who were dark skin toned and it was quite frankly normal to me. I never thought there was anything wrong with that. That's why it's so common to hear stories where teachers and parents and siblings and friends and cousins and aunties and uncles will happily make negative comments about you for basically being darker skin tone and not white. And that is one of the biggest issues that needs to be addressed is that we need to call out people who make these comments. And I know that's not an easy thing to do, especially if it's someone like your grandparent or your own parents. But to initiate the conversation, whether small or big, about colorism does play a big role in trying to combat this issue of colorism. It is unfortunate that we do still live in a world where your skin tone can literally dictate your life, opportunities to success, your income, your career, marriage. At the end of the day, a preference for lighter skin tone is not just a preference. There's so much more to it. We shouldn't have to hate ourselves because of the color of our skin. And the fact that I had to talk one of my best friends out of not wanting to be like that because of the color of her skin, about the fact that we're just so bad. It's not right. I just don't like the way brown looks because the way brown looks looks really nasty for some reason, but I don't know what reason. I like light-skinned women. I want you to be lighter than me. I love African-American women, but I just don't like my skin complexion. I'm so ugly. <gasps> what? Oh, you make me cry. I, I love being dark skinned. I cherish it. I think it's one of the most beautiful things about me. That's what's so insidious about colorism is that you can feel however you feel about yourself, but how the world views you can chip away at that self-esteem. We have to reinforce the value in dark skin and the beauty in dark skin for younger women because it takes a lot of fortitude to combat that. It's not an issue we can just unlearn overnight. I think it's so important that we do teach one another that there is nothing wrong with your skin tone and being darker skin tone does not make you any less beautiful than someone who's lighter skin tone if you guys did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification button so you don't miss out on any of my videos and i would love to hear your opinion on this topic in the comment section down below or whether you have any stories about colorism but before we end the video i want to thank skillshare again for sponsoring today's video if you aren't aware skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for its creators to explore new skills, deepen existing passion, and get lost in creativity. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, what I love about Skillshare is that there is such a wide range of classes. And recently, one of my favorite YouTubers, MKBHD, released a Skillshare class on YouTube success. And for myself as a YouTuber, this has helped me so much because I get to learn from a professional YouTuber and really get an insight of what it takes to make great content. Skillshare is created specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you don't have to worry about new content and you can focus on getting creative. Skillshare is also less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first thousand people to use my link in the description down below will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. That's it for today's video and I will see you guys next time.